Hi everyone, I'm just going to be starting a house blend in a few minutes, so I'm just putting up the comment. Let's be with uh, just a second, saying who is going to be here. Uh, so just, uh, we'll be starting just after one o'clock, or uh, three o'clock, um, and I will look for Rachel. Um, and I'm just putting her name in now. <laughs> uh, all right, here we go. Okay, everyone, I'll just be starting in one minute. <laughs> Pinning comments is not easy on the fly. Um, where are we? Uh, Toronto. Okay, I'm going to post this. I'm going to pin it. Great. Okay, let's look for... There we are. Thanks, everyone. Just awaiting Rachel. Should be coming. Hey, <laughs> there we are. Hi. Hi, <laughs> Rachel. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Can you hear me okay this time? I can. Good. Well, thanks for being here. And uh, it's three o'clock. There we are. So thanks, everyone. Um, for all those who are joining and uh, Rachel, I'll do introductions in a minute. Um, welcome to House Blend Live, uh, the gallery's, uh, I guess every two weeks, uh, program on Instagram Live where we uh, gallery curators speak with colleagues from not only the gallery, but around the Canadian uh, art world uh, to sort of take stock of the ecology of the uh, the world in which we, we all work. Uh, I'm Jonathan Shaughnessy, Associate Curator of Contemporary Art at the National Gallery of Canada and I'm here this week with um, Rachel, Rachel Buschholzer, uh, who is the uh, Head of Programming and Strategic Initiatives at Art Toronto. So welcome, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Definitely. Well, I was excited to, you know, propose to bring the bring House Blend to Art Toronto. Uh, as you know, I'm enjoying Art Toronto uh, from my dining room. I'm working from home, uh, as, uh, uh, as many of us are, uh, those fortunate enough to be gainfully working uh, away right now. And um, yeah, and you are as well. And, and funnily enough, uh, not in Toronto, I guess, I gather. Not in Toronto. I'm in Montreal right now. In Montreal. So we can do a lot from our, our virtual environments. And just uh, before we get officially started, I just uh, wanted to recognize, uh, I live uh, in the Gatineau, just across the uh, the Ottawa River from Ottawa, but the uh, where I live and where the gallery, National Gallery of Canada is situated, is on unceded uh, Anishinaabe Algonquin territory. And I always like to start by thanking the uh, custodians of this really beautiful part of the world uh, since time immemorial, uh, and to recognize that and also recognize all of our friends, colleagues, and uh, those in the community, uh, First Nations, Métis, and the very large Inuit community uh, in Ottawa uh, that I always like to recognize, especially uh, uh, always and, and especially uh, in these days, um, recognizing these communities uh, is super important. Um, and also, uh, I think you're in Montreal, as we know, Rachel, so uh, in that, I think we can also uh, present an acknowledgement to the longstanding presence of the Kenyan Kehaka uh, in Montreal, and Montreal being a convergence point of so many First Nations going back, again, to time immemorial. So um, on that, I wanted to bring uh, from the land to the virtual environment where we are, uh, and uh, thank you again, and uh, say hello again, Rachel. So you're, I mean, you, our Toronto this year, uh, exceptional year, of course, exceptional year, 2020 on so many fronts. Um, but maybe we could just start by getting to know you a little bit better. Um, could you uh, maybe tell us uh, what your role is in the, uh, the big initiative that is Canada's Art Fair? Absolutely. So my role is really around both programming and partnerships and also the convergence of the two. So this year, we're, we're really lucky to have amazing partners like RBC, um, who've supported us in making this huge leap to taking an event fully online. I should say hybrid. We do have an in-person mm -hmm. component, but primarily yeah. online, that's new. So 
Yeah, we're very lucky in that respect. And I'm also responsible for building partnerships with cultural organizations across the country. We're really grateful to have the National Gallery as a partner this year. Um, and yeah, we have a lot of partnerships we're really proud of. So, so that is kind of the scope of my role at the fair. Yeah, and we, uh, we have been talking for the last few months, really, uh, since uh, you and uh, uh, Maya Nelson, the uh, director of the fair, uh, reached out and um, and the well it's led to a partnership as you say and the national gallery is very happy to to be present i mean in a way i don't think that the national gallery has been present uh at the fair there's always been some involvement maybe an event or two but this year the fact that we we have a virtual uh, gallery uh on the platform of art toronto where people can get links back to all the future and present and ongoing programs at the gallery and then participating in a number of the uh platform series events so uh those will be, we should mention the dates for the fair um, for the general public opens on Saturday, uh, October 31st. So Halloween, big <laughs> Halloween opening of Art Toronto, if I got the dates right. Yes, October 31st to November 8th. So to November there's 8th. a little while to check it out, which is great. Yeah, and uh, and then and people can check it out. Just we'll put that up there now at arttoronto.ca because I think it's really important to note that it is free this year, which is something notable and very easy, I think, just a registration to uh, to then get access to everything that you know is on offer, and that's a lot. And I'd like to unpack some of that uh, with you <laughs> right now. Um, but before that, can we? I mean, I think we've probably got uh, uh, an audience like the gallery, the public of the National Gallery, that has various levels of you know um, uh, links to the art world. So, just in broad strokes, I mean, what can you tell us a bit about Art Toronto? I mean, the platform as it developed and. Um, you know, what, what it, what is it? I mean, what it's, it's more than just a commercial enterprise. I realize there's a lot going on. So can you just kind of describe the fair for us? Absolutely. So, I mean, of course, this year it's taken a really different format in general, as I'm sure everyone knows, art fairs are really an international, like a huge industry. Um, it's really a point that punctuates the calendar year. There's a lot of different events that people, fairs are used to travel. I mean, galleries are used to traveling now to attend reach different markets, gain exposure for the artists. So um, it's a really big thing. Um, and for us, we are really, uh, we like to call ourselves a regional fair with a national reach. We're the largest art fair in Canada. Um, and this year has really been an opportunity to take our programming coast to coast, something that we always have strived to do, but this year we've really been able to just by virtue of a lot of it being online. Um, so we're working with organizations um, from the totally the East Coast, like Fogel Island Arts, right. all the to um, the Contemporary Art Gallery in Vancouver. So we're really, really lucky to be able to have those partnerships this year. Yeah, and, and what is the, uh, the, the public for the fair? I mean, it's a range, isn't it? I mean, I, I know that I've been having the chance because in, in also building up the architecture for the gallery's presence of the, at the fair, had a chance to look around. Um, I've been making my way through, but there's, uh, it's not just art professionals, I think, that you expect to find coming through, whether in virtual or in real time. Absolutely. Yeah. So, of course, it's an important professional event, but also we have students coming through. It's really an educational opportunity because we do have so much programming. Um, there's a lot of events, um, including ones with the National Gallery this year, and we can talk about that mm -hmm. more. But um, there's a lot of opportunities to listen, learn, um, hear artists speak about their work. Um, so, so, yeah, we really do have a really broad audience. And, and this year, we're really lucky to be able to offer the fair for free. So, um, behind the paywall of a ticket even. So that, that is yeah. a unique yeah. opportunity for sure this year. No, I, I think there's a lot to sort of um, discuss there uh, in terms of, I mean, when, when the call came out and I, well, I wanted to ask you first, I mean, ideally the fair it would be the fair. And I recall very fondly last year, you know, being down for the, uh, you know, the preview nights, the opening days, um, you know, fairs are, uh, a place that we see art, but they're also special in that when we visit, I think as a curator, I can speak that, you know, we go to exhibitions, we go to galleries, we visit, I mean, part of our research into figuring out what's going on in the art world, where, what are the conversations that are, you know, uh, that we should be aware of, what are we excited about? Um, I think the fairs, fairs in general kind of bring uh, that together in one place and and I mean do become a bit of a conference or a trade show if we want to be you know just cross yeah. about it in terms of where uh, everyone gets together to see what's happening um, and I know that Art Toronto in the past at least uh, 
as far as I've always relied on it in this vast country that is Canada. Um, it's a place where, uh, you know, I, I make it to Toronto, Montreal uh, fairly often within a calendar year and a normal year. Um, <laughs> but to get out to Vancouver, to get to Calgary, uh, Winnipeg, you know, wherever or the East Coast is a little bit more challenging. And you get to see those people, at least, you know, once a year, it's almost like a reunion, almost like, a, you know, it, it has that kind of feel to it of, you know, mm -hmm. seeing people you haven't seen yes. in a long time. I think that that, you know, my experience already this year has been that it's some... Um, uh, well, I think we're getting used to just being closer than ever in some funny way. So mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you about, well, first off, um, when was the decision made that it was just not going to be possible to, to do as you've done before? And what was that like, that transition, that awareness and realization? Yeah, um, I mean, it was definitely an interesting process. And I'm sure you had the same with a lot of your virtual events and transitioning things quickly and I know for us, we were fortunate to have a bit of time up our sleeve and, and the time to really, when COVID started in March, we got together, we had a lot of focus groups with our various partners, mm -hmm. galleries, um, all of our different stakeholders and, and really probed in terms of what people needed, what we could offer. Um, we made the decision, I would say, finally in July. Um, so it was it was a few months of research and then wow. and then why it was really we found the um, platform partner that we're working with um, and that's a whole new area for us um, mm. working with a tech company on, on building this this digital site um, so so yeah it's really been a process and um, since then it's just been an iterate like an iterative really thing where we've been learning as we go and we've been really fortunate to have such a wonderful community around us all the galleries that we work with every year and um, our broader community we've been really fortunate to have the support there and everyone really be on board from the get go. So, so yeah, it's yeah. Been, been a great process. So, that, so, so when you reach out, I mean, uh, you found there was enthusiasm from, from galleries and we're talking about private galleries, but also you have a cultural institutions section of the fair, which the national gallery is a part of uh, probably magazines. There are other public, like I'm sure they're also there. Was there enthusiasm then to say, let's, let's get behind this. Let's make sure that our Toronto is as robust as, as it can be um, in spite of the times? It was definitely, you know, everyone figured, I was figuring it out as we went. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of enthusiasm. There was also um, the fact that from our perspective too, you know, seeing art in person is really the best way. And yeah. we have to reconcile ourselves with that. And I know some of our galleries have really innovated, particularly um, the group that have joined at Stephen Bulger Gallery in Toronto this year, Pierre Francois Lulet, um, Will Abale from Vancouver, Yves Trepanier from Calgary, they've all staged a pop up, which is which yes, is amazing. I was I, I had a phone call uh, with Eve. I, I was just kind of doing the rounds a bit yesterday. I will continue to do for all those who might be watching over the coming days and getting in touch with uh, with colleagues and galleries and gallery directors. And I. <laughs> I made a plan to FaceTime with Yves Trepanier, the director of Trepanier Bear, and I, I didn't realize he picked up and there he was in Toronto. And I said, what are you doing? And then uh, Will Abale, who I noticed on his Instagram was flying, you know, it posted that he was flying to Toronto. So we're not traveling. I mean, it's just something that we, we can't do, but it's, yeah. it's sort of great to say. And I know when I was talking, uh, it seemed like, you know, yes, everything's online and that's one platform, but a few took the initiative to say, we need to do something uh, also. And so uh, that's interesting, I guess, for those in Toronto who can make the appointment, from what I understand, it's appointment and all, all precautions and all, all regulations are being adhered to in terms of a safe visit. Um, but that was something, and I understand that was really done also in dialogue with Art Toronto. I mean, this wasn't, uh, um, so, that, you know, that's, and then can you talk about some of the other, um, because what I want to get back to, I keep bringing something up, but the first meeting that we had, I had a phone call uh, with Mia and, she kind of was outlining the uh, vision for the fair. And it struck me having been going to Freeze, going to Art Basel, these other fair modules, they, you know, kind of the way that all fairs are responding. Um, I really liked the model. It seemed to be quite hybrid that Art Toronto was proposing where how can we make a fair that is online and virtual, uh, which it is, but also having an active program uh, in real space and physical spaces of the gallery. Could you talk a little bit more about how you, the vision for that? Absolutely, yeah. So um, the vision really has been, as you said, a hybrid fair. Um, so while the centralized component of the fair is the online booth spaces and our online programming, 
it's not just the group that have come to Toronto who are doing in-person programming. In fact, most of their galleries have got in-person events on the go. Uh, we have almost 100 events actually in galleries across Canada. Um, we're calling our hub cities, Toronto, Montreal, Calgary, and Vancouver, because that's where the majority of our galleries are. But there's events in other cities, of course, as well. Um, and, and really, our goal is just to get people out to the galleries, out to seeing, out seeing art. Um, from our perspective, it's really one of the best activities to do right now, because you can do so safely. Like, the galleries can limit capacity. It's obviously a no-touch space. So it's, it's already really well set up, too. Um, accommodate COVID friendly visits. And uh, we really want to encourage people to do that over the next 10 days because um, nothing replaces it. And it's a great, it's a mm -hmm. great view. And, you know, being able to go online and watch talks and complement um, that in-person experience with some other programming is, is important to us. And I'm sure it's the same for you right now with, with the gallery and um, being open, but also having so many events online. Yeah. I mean, that's uh I, I echo completely what you're saying about um, the gallery has been open since mid July. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I think it's getting, you know, it's getting tougher, uh, definitely restrictions as numbers are increasing again. And we're across the river from uh, Quebec and Gatineau and there's a whole other set of restrictions there and closures. So colleagues in and around Montreal who have had to close galleries again, um, uh, that's, uh, that's something. But at the same time, what we're hearing from visitors and the galleries public is, yeah, a real excitement about being in that space. And I think it is a space that offers, I mean, it's huge. If for those of you who have been to the National Gallery of Canada, I mean, with the reduced capacity on offer, it, it can't feel kind of safer in terms of your, you really have the place to yourself, even if we're at our 30% capacity, so to speak. So it's, it is an alternative. And I think um, there's a thirst for it. And, uh, and so however, this might happen to offer that that mixture of yeah, the talks, I mean, that gets to something we were talking about when we, we did this discussion in French earlier, um, that I'm not sure how you go back to another model now, at least when it comes to the programs and talks section of I know our Toronto is a very robust um, platform series of talks. Uh, I know I'm, I've done one with um, Corey Jackson from the RBC collection on emerging artists. Our director, Sasha Suda, is in conversation with Greg Hill about Abadokwin and Indigenous art at the gallery. And also Andrew Kennard, our um, associate curator of photographs, is in dialogue with Maura Davey about the Maura Davey exhibition that we have on presently, a uh, Canadian uh, artist based in New York. Um, but these are all happening virtually, and I'm sort of sensing at the gallery that. Uh, you know, how do we, when, when we get back into sort of the auditorium, let's say, I can't imagine that you wouldn't just think that you have to broadcast to, yeah. uh, to the entire world, to the entire nation. Um, how do you think that's maybe going to shift thinking around the table of Art Toronto um, at present? I think keeping the national reach that we've been able to build this year is definitely going to be a big priority moving forward. I think it's an unexpected silver lining of this whole situation that I know our team, we're all really excited about it. The fact that we've been able to really build bonds with organizations across the country and with our partner galleries. So it's definitely something we want to continue. I think having programming across Canada is definitely going to be part of what we do moving forward. While, of course, we all hope to return to our usual October in-person <laughs> event, fingers crossed next year. But um but yeah, I think having events throughout the country during the fair and, and perhaps throughout the year as well will be something we continue. Yeah, yeah. Um, did, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, and, and how does, I think that's another question where you're, I know it's a small team. People might not think so. I think you probably look at Art Toronto and it, it seems, I mean, it's a huge undertaking uh, to organize across the country to organize everything. But I know you're quite a small group, in fact, I think of, that work full time on this and are totally dedicated. Um, how does the year play out for you in terms of preparing for something like this, whether it's online or, or otherwise? I mean, is it constant throughout the year? It is constant throughout the year. Um, it is, we do, we run another art fair in Toronto, another annual fair called Artist Project, which usually mm -hmm. takes place in February all this year, although this year it will be pushed to the spring. Um, so that usually takes up a few months of our year and then the rest of the time is spent on Art Toronto. It's definitely at least a six month planning process um, that gets even more full on in, of course, the, the months leading up to the <laughs> Right <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. And uh, does it mean that you get a chance to uh, 
to visit uh, much of the fair or do you have to wait until a few days in to actually be able to uh, collect your thoughts about everything that's on view? Well, I'm lucky in the sense that I've worked closely on a lot of the programming, so I have been able to see much of that. But in terms of actually seeing the work at the fair, I've seen a bit and, and highlights from the team, but I, I'm really excited to dive in further and be able to really explore and, and see what's on offer from, from all of our galleries because I know the content is amazing. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the chance to really delve deeper. Yeah, what can we, sorry. I was just gonna say, what have you been enjoying? I know you spent some yeah. time looking through. Yeah, no, definitely. I've been, I mean, I think that uh, our, um, I say our, like the National Gallery, um, and I think, you know, curators, uh, you know, that we have the collection, uh, work with the Contemporary Art Collection and my colleagues. So there's definitely um, a strong need, I would almost say, to, to be at the fair and be at there, out there and uh, in discussions, looking at what's on offer as soon as we can. Um, I know that uh, with the partnership with the Art Gallery of Ontario, um, they, you know, our colleagues there really, I think, get a sense a week or more in advance of what's coming up so they can make certain selections uh, right away of, of the work that speaks to them. And I know that announcement was just made. Um, but yeah, we go through and uh, I think that what, uh, what strikes me, um, of course, we have many processes at the gallery. So I'm an associate curator in contemporary art. I, I don't just uh, go around um, and say, I, you know, this is wonderful, let's take it kind of thing. You, I mean, everything gets discussed right up to right. the level of our board and there's processes. So I think really, our, Art fairs are, are tricky. Uh, they're, they can be challenging for that because, you know, it's a place where you do kind of sometimes, especially if you're talking about painting or unique objects, have to sometimes act quick because uh, the works may not yeah. be there. Um, so, but there's always discussions to be had, which means that it's really important to, um, to, to pinpoint where you want to go and what you want to see. And if there is interest, sort of have that conversation early. Um, I find that um, there's a lot of, that, that speaks to what art fairs can offer. Because for me, I don't necessarily just approach it as, you know, let's go and find that work, but rather are there artists that I'm interested in? Uh, which galleries are they working with? And within that conversation, uh, you know, is there a work at the fair, but also what's coming up? And so often um, at Art Toronto and otherwise, I've had surprises that have come not by what's on view, but rather by talking and then learning that that artist is actually gonna be in this and this exhibition somewhere uh, coming up and that maybe it would be best to have a dialogue and wait for that to happen uh, you know, and then you kind of find the work that would be really well suited for entering into a collection like the National Gallery which is really a national collection that aims to speak both nationally and internationally or at least part of a dialogue that is quite global in that sense. Um, so I think that within that there's so many exciting I mean I really do think there's there's a number of galleries that uh, especially, well, across the country. I mean, it's, it's really great to see what's happening and how galleries are, what, what they're bringing from around, you know, not just Toronto, but Montreal and uh, through the prairies out to Vancouver and again, the East Coast. And so I'm always excited just to kind of make sure I, I do a, a cross section, a sampling of all of these places and, uh, and what's on view. I haven't had a chance yet to really delve into uh, the programming, um, which I plan to do probably over the weekend. Uh, all of the, uh, the fantastic uh, platform series, uh, maybe you could kind of highlight a bit of that because I noticed that there's a lot of relevant discussions uh, certainly around, well, I feel like the platform series is reflecting many of the active discussions in the world, in the art world right now. Uh, I mean, not just around COVID, but we know we've seen so much critical engagement and activities around museums, uh, the muse museums and institutions and their place within uh, systems of systemic racism. You know, there's a lot going on around colonial histories, uh, thinking about collections in that way. And I think that this is reflected on in a lot of the platform series this year. And maybe you could speak a little bit about how those programs develop and uh, the kinds of dialogues that lead to who's speaking uh, there between artists, curators and, and the like. Yeah, yeah, we've been really fortunate with our programming this year to have, um, I believe we're working with over 18 partners on partner organizations on our talks. So they've all really been collaborations. Um, and it's been a real joy to work on, to work on that side of the fair and, and really be able to do a broader program than we usually are. Um, mm. 
I, we've really had a, an intentional focus on everything that's going on right now, specifically around Black Lives Matter and um, how that plays out in museums. So we do have a talk on decolonizing museums that was done in partnership with the AGO. We're, we're really thrilled to be able to have that discussion as part of, as part of the fair. I know the National Gallery also has several conversations on this subject, especially the one between Sasha Suda and Greg Hill around um, how Indigenous artwork is being, um, the role of Indigenous work at the, at the NGC moving forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I, I haven't had a chance to check that one out, but I'm really looking forward to it. So, so yeah, it's, it's definitely been really a collaboration this year and being able to extend our reach and work with organizations beyond our usual scope has been, um, has been amazing. And would, would you say that on that, that there's also a, uh, uh like, I, I think what you get a sense of, uh, and I also really, uh, well, I think any fair, but, you know, fairs deal with this differently is, you know, we think about contemporary art, we think about galleries that are working with living artists, but it, it has to be said that that's not the only part of the fair. And I think that, uh, you know, there's a number of galleries that certainly always bring or do work with either estates or they work with artists that are, you know, or artworks that are from before what, I mean, at the National Gallery, we consider contemporary anything from around after 1990 these days. And the last 25 years is part of the dialogue of the world we're in now. Whereas if you start to move back, you get into modern or, you know, the 80s. And But I've, I've actually found some some really high um, level, like important works by Canadian artists um, that were created in, you know, in earlier periods, like more what we would consider modern and modern art histories. And I think you get a flavor of that at the fair. Um, but I know that there's also a big push on uh, supporting emerging practices. Um, that was the talk that I was engaged with uh, that is going to be on the platform is ready to be seen uh, with Corey Jackson. And um, is that been, a, I, I mean, I think for the fair itself is promoting kind of uh, new voices onto the scene, something that maybe through the partnership with RBC, I think that's important, but is it, you know, is it something that is, has become a big part of the fair, would you say? Yes, absolutely. A big part of the fair. Um, RBC's program is amazing. Um, their Emerging Artist Project is something we are really grateful to be able to highlight. And yes, for us in general, promoting both emerging practices, but also historic works, we really aim to um, run the spectrum. I think focusing on Canadian artists this year has been really something we've been grateful to be able to do more of. Yes. Because it, I, I, and I think I said this to you when we were speaking in French, but I feel sometimes, and I think all of us as a team feel sometimes that we look, we look outside of Canada, we look at what's, you know, going on in the US at some of the big fairs like Basel, like Freeze. Um, and, but really this year we've looked inward and, and really appreciated the diversity and scope of what exists here in Canada and really wanting to lean into that more. And I think that's something we'll take forward as well. Actually, this I really, I think is hugely important and, and you're bringing it up in that context. And I think I think about it a lot um, also as a, uh, yeah, as a curator working with, you know, the National Gallery of Canada and sort of this mandate to collect uh, certainly within Canada, but against a kind of, uh, well, against an international and national framework. Um, and I think a lot of the conversations have kind of turned to, well, what does it mean to be, to be here now? And I, I'm really interested mm -hmm. in that question of the mandate for our Toronto, that kind of national, um, also in terms of thinking of the virtual environment. I know that in the past, when I've experienced the fair, uh, there's been a focus, I mean, whether it's uh, artists from, or I think there was a focus on LA one year, a focus on uh, galleries from South America another year. You know, there's been this focus on trying to bring those galleries to Toronto, to Canada. Um, now with the virtual environment, I wonder, because it's a very tough you know, uh, situation really, when you think about it's all, you know, if you're going to go to one online fair and try to participate or another, who's looking, what's the market for that? And I wonder, you know, it's no, I've noticed that maybe what I guess I'm saying with that is some of the galleries I'm noticing are coming to the fair, um, maybe from the States or from elsewhere, who do have a history of working with Canadian artists, kind of entrenching those dialogues, which I think is really important. I think something that could be um, really needs to be highlighted, I think, yes. right now, right? Not, you know, the way that also Canadian artists are working uh, and within that framework, I mean, Indigenous as well uh, as artists in Canada. Um, but I don't know if you've seen a shift, like, is there really how that's played out this year with the virtual environment? I would say if, if in terms of a shift, it's really been an intentional focus for us. 
Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the conversation in general, I mean, I think things are going to continue to evolve as we move through this pandemic period, as things change in terms of regulations, what can open, what cannot, what does travel look like, all of that. But I definitely think that this, this moment where we've really focused inward and um, focused on Canada has been something that will have a lasting impact. Yeah. No, that's, uh, that's very exciting. And I guess, because um, uh, it is Canada's art fair, as you yes. know, I think our Toronto is, and it is the biggest. And I think um, there, there's definitely, and that's why I think it's really important also to sort of, uh, I'm really happy we're having this conversation and just really looking at this platform as a place where the art world in Canada gets to um, present itself, you know, to the country, but, but and beyond this year, certainly well beyond this year. Um, I know you're up late nights and working all at all hours to get this just underway, but um, I guess I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you uh, while you're doing all of this work, what, uh, what you get most excited about uh, with the fair uh, once you get a chance to, uh, to sit back and enjoy it. I'm really, really looking forward to our national gallery hop day, which is what we're calling it. We're having like a, we're really pushing to have people go out to the galleries on November 7th specifically across the country. A lot of the galleries will have special events, performances, and we're really encouraging everyone to do the same. Um, as I know we've talked about in this conversation, being able to see art in person is, is irreplaceable. So I'm really excited for the opportunity to do that um, even this year. So that, that's November 7th, and it's going to be across the country where different events will take place in each time zone accordingly to their program? Exactly. There's more information on our website, too. We'll be uploading some maps of each city so that people can um, have a little guide as they walk around. But yeah, we're, we're really, I'm really looking forward to that one, especially. Put on your masks and away you go, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, no, no, that, that's great. I mean, it echoes. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's so important. And uh, yeah, we can still do that. Yeah, hopefully. totally. Hopefully. <laughs> Yeah. No, no. Well, yes, that's true. Hopefully. And fingers crossed that all goes without a hitch. And certainly when we're no talking way. about the entire country, there's it's just this this um, the way every place is affected differently is is part of the signature of this um, this pandemic, it seems as well, even and in such a big country as Canada. There's uh, no certainties. But um, well, I think that, uh, Rachel, I, I really I don't know if there's anything you wanted to bring up that we haven't uh, we've covered, but this was really a chance to get to know you and get to know the fair a little bit better. Um, did we leave anything out? <laughs> I don't think so. I think we've I think we've covered everything. I mean, the last thing I would say is for anyone who wants to participate, arttoronto.ca is the place to go. Um, please check out the National Gallery's amazing programming. We're so grateful to have been able to work together this year. And um, I'm hey. really excited about what we've pulled to get, pulled off. It's, it's uh, I agree. And of course I would be, yes, I should be the first to promote it as well. Um, and that's uh, in the cultural institutions uh, sector of the virtual fair. Um, I'm really happy about it too. I think it, it does point when people go there uh, it kind of also navigates our website a little bit because, uh, you know, Venice with Stan Douglas is a huge thing that's coming in mm -hmm. 2022. And that'll there's some mention of that and it'll lead you right to where there's more information on the site and everything else. So um, it's been a pleasure to work on that with you. And I have to thank the teams at the National Gallery as well who have put that together. Um, and uh, so I'll do that uh, as well now. And um, yeah, and then I guess, you know, we'll have to regroup once you've had a chance to have a look around and we can share, yeah. share all of our findings. Um, I'm really excited to get back in there and, uh, and for everyone else. Yes. Uh, it's, uh, you know, hopefully, um, I think, I don't think it can be underlined enough free and online and there's so much content and, uh, yeah. and really, and you could just get lost in there for, um, a day or two or, you know, <laughs> a way to spend the back. pandemic, a way to spend isolation. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Rachel. Well, um, Thank you again and uh, good luck in the coming days. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. For sure. Okay. Bye. 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 Oh, and thanks everyone for being here. I should do that too. Sorry. I'm, I'm always thanks for everyone who stopped in this week for House Blend. And uh, please do stay tuned for uh, upcoming programming. In another couple of weeks, we're actually going to be speaking uh, around the Governor General's Awards this year that are out in Alberta. So stay tuned for more updates on that soon. So with that, bye everyone. Bye, Rachel. And we'll bye. Bye. Bye.